Hello, everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands from where we are all meeting today and to pay my respects to the others past, present and emerging. My name is Larissa Rassusa. I am a 30-year PhD candidate at the University of South Australia. And today I will be talking about opportunities and challenges for upscaling our Citizen Science Mosquito Surveillance Program, the Mosse Monitors Program. So, my supervisors are Professor Craig Williams, Dr. Catherine Modoc, and Dr. Cameron Webb. And I will also be happy to answer any questions during this presentation via chat, but I'm also happy to keep this conversation going if someone is interested. So please reach out to me at the end of the presentation on my email as well. Uh, that will be on the final slide. So yeah, let's talk about the Mosley Monitors program. First, why citizen science mosquito surveillance? We all know that the citizen science benefits are invaluable. So citizen science can overcome logistical and geographic barriers. It can connect different stakeholders and it also allows participation uh, in programs of local, national, and global importance. And this way, different citizen science mosquito monitoring programs are emerging all over the world due to the concern about mosquito-borne diseases and the impact on public health. And actually, in the past years, we have seen that the number of, uh, number of cases of malaria, chikungunya, zika virus, and dengue fever are increasing uh, globally. And we have seen the same story in Australia for dengue. But at the same time, we can see that some citizen science mosquito surveillance programs in the world have been successful in engaging people and also detecting invasive species of mosquitoes. So for example, the mosquito alert in Spain, uh, this is a citizen science program where people use a specific smartphone app to share observations of mosquitoes. And so this invasive species, the its japonicus, was detected for the first time in the country by a citizen science team. So this is just an example of a successful program. So to understand what has been done so far in the world in terms of engaging communities to monitor mosquitoes. I conducted a scoping review and yeah, it also helped us to understand what are the gaps and how the field can grow. So with this review, we found uh, 29 citizen science mosquito monitoring initiatives globally. The earliest ones uh, started in Europe and in the United States but new programs are emerging in the past years in different countries. And we have four programs in Oceania, one in the Solomon Islands and four in Australia. And yeah, these are some examples of uh, current and ongoing programs. And so thinking of increasing the knowledge of mosquito fauna in Australia, we launched the Mosley Monitors program in 2018 so this is the first citizen science program in the world that combines fixed point mosquito tracking and public report and we have been running this program for three years and we collected over 14,000 mosquitoes so far and we had over 200 people involved so to run the program uh, we recruit the general public to set up a mouse trap in their backyards uh, to manage the trap just once every fortnight. So to collect the mosquitoes that get trapped in this uh, translucent chamber, this transparent chamber, uh, to place the mosquitoes on a specific tip card, which is provided as well, take photos of these mosquitoes and send these photos to us by email to be counted and identified. Uh, and we also make this data available in a free-to-use online platform. So in the first year uh, of data collection between 2018 and 2019, uh, we compared data collected by citizen scientists 
with a professional program in South Australia. And we could see that for the same period, mouse monitors were able to collect four times more mosquitoes than the professional program. Uh, as we can see looking at the first graph on the blue bars. And when we look at the second graph, we can see that the diversity of species collected was similar. So we can see that there is an overlap between these different sets of the collection. So it shows that both of the professional program and the citizen science program uh, had similar contributions in terms of diverse of the species collected. And yeah, so we knew that we had this valuable data of data collection in South Australia. Uh, so we, we also wanted to explore if we could upscale the model monitors to another local area, and also if we would be able to explore uh, people's learning outcomes by getting involved in the program. So last year, we ran two trials, one in South Australia and one in Western Australia, in Broome. So we invited the new mouse monitors to answer before and after surveys and to answer and to be interviewed at the end of the trial, which was a three month trial. So preliminary analysis had shown that people reported gain of knowledge regarding mosquito occurrence and mosquito-borne diseases in their local areas. And also after the trial, people were able to identify the most common mosquito species in their local areas again. And uh, a small percentage of people were able, they showed changes in behavior uh, regarding how they control mosquitoes in their houses. So some people reported starting to look for mosquito larvae and eggs in their properties after participating in the trial. So yeah, these are some examples of people also uh, starting to identify uh, the species when they were sending the photos to us by email. So we can see they were identifying either the species uh, and explaining how they identified it, like through the um, lines, dots, uh, scales uh, on the body of the mosquito, and also identifying male and female, which is an important um, information, as just only the female mosquitoes bite, and only female mosquitoes can carry pathogens from one person, one infected person, to the other. So people were able to learn as well uh, how to identify these different characteristics. So besides the track method, we also have an ever-growing project on a naturalist that has recorded over 2,000 observations of mosquitoes and 65 species. We also have this growing network of observers and identifiers. But different from the trap method, where we can collect a high number of mosquitoes per fortnight, online naturalists, we can observe, uh, we can see individual observations, but we can see the actual geographic location where every species was observed. So we can see the exact, exact location where there was a human mosquito encounter. So yeah, different from the trap method, with the iNaturalist, we can uh, see a contribution for, of uh, diversity and distribution of the species observed. So here we can see a heat map showing the distribution of observations. And the warmer the color, the more observations on that specific area. And although it is growing, we still can see that the highest contributions come from the southern and the east coast uh, in Australia. So yeah, so far as the first steps, we could see that citizen scientists were able to collect vector mosquitoes from their backyards. They were able to learn from their participation in these initiatives. We could see also different contributions. So the, from the trap engagement and from the iNaturalist engagement, we could see different but complementary information. But we are also interested in upscaling our engagement to a national level. 
during the peak season of mosquitoes. And to do that, this year we organized and we ran for the first time the Mosimath intervention. So yeah, this year we had people participating from five different states uh, in Australia, over six weeks of data collection, running from February to March. And yeah, over this period, we had a total of 148 photo submissions of uh, 1,025 mosquitoes and of eight different species. And yeah, this is Vini, my partner, helping me to organize all the mod kits to post to the different states for this data collection. And we could see that it was possible to engage people nationally and they were able to collect mosquitoes of medical and ecological importance from their backyards in this first trial, and also no invasive species was detected uh, during the Mazamath intervention. Some of the challenges and opportunities that we could see uh, after this trial uh, included keeping engagement during the data collection. Not everyone, not all of these people these 100 people who registered, not everyone submitted photos during the trial. And also another challenge was uh, receiving or improving uh, the number of identifiable photos. So in this first trial, about 40% of the photos were indeterminate due to low photo quality or low resolution or focus or that some mosquitoes, some specimens were too desiccated. But from previous trials, we noticed that participants improved the quality of their submissions over time. So yeah, we believe if we keep this uh, network of citizen scientists engaged between trials, we could allow more identifiable images for the next editions of MOSMA. But this intervention also provided opportunities to expand the geographical coverage of mosquito surveillance in Australia and also the use of accessible technology like smartphones allowed remote participation and we could also celebrate partnerships with other local citizen science programs like the Zika Mazika and health research programs like the Hot North by Menzies. So it was a huge opportunity for us. So yeah, just wrapping up as a summary of what we have been doing with the mother monitors. So we conducted a scoping review to understand what has been done globally. We launched the mother monitors program in South Australia in 2018. And so we upscaled these methods, the trap method uh, to another state and we explored uh, the educational outcomes. We also upscaled the methods, so from TRAP to the iNaturalist platform, and at the moment I'm also assessing data collected there. And yeah, finally we upscaled the program nationally, aiming to move from local interventions to a national implementation. So yeah, we could see that there are there were lots of benefits from citizen science engagement in mosquito monitoring. So benefits to researchers in terms of upscaling the geographical coverage of data collection and benefits to participants as well that can learn about mosquitoes, can learn new skills, can do something meaningful to their communities and can have fun as well collecting and taking photos of mosquitoes. So yeah, if anyone is interested in getting involved, please join us on iNaturalist today and also reach out to us on our email or, or website if you are interested in participating in the Mozama 2022. And yeah, so thank you for listening. And yeah, I'd like to thank my supervisors. Special thanks to Stina Fricker. And I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>